Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the BBC Radio 1 breakfast show. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying OCR A-level media studies as it's currently one of the set texts for study on that specification with regards to industries and audiences. The specification says that you need to have studied the show as a whole and you can look at any episodes from September 2017 onwards. I'm going to refer to a lot of general information but you should be able to have some specific examples as well. The Breakfast Show is one of the most popular radio slots for any channel as it is when audiences are most likely to be listening. The Radio 1 Breakfast Show has been running for many decades. One of the most famous presenters was Chris Moyles, who presented the show for a very long time. He had very high listening figures, but was eventually removed from the show and replaced because of his age. They felt that he was getting too old and therefore wasn't appealing to a young enough audience anymore. The show used to be hosted by somebody called Nick Grimshaw. Nick Grimshaw hosted it from 2012 to 2018. Um, he had presented um, some stuff on Radio 1 on a show called Switch before, which was a youth show. He'd presented on TV before, he'd done some music awards, he'd also done one series as a judge on The X Factor. So that was quite a good way of bringing in more people to the Radio 1 breakfast show because he would be familiar to several types of audience. They paid him a very high salary, £400,000 to present the Radio 1 breakfast show. So that just goes to prove uh, how much money the BBC have, but also how popular that particular uh, radio show is. However, over time, he did start to lose quite a lot of listeners and radio over time, he did start to lose quite a lot of listeners and the BBC made the decision to change the presenter. The presenter from 2018 up to present is Greg James. Greg James has a long history with Radio 1. Uh, he'd had the drive, drive time slot previously, so he had experience presenting on a big uh, radio show. Um, and he again had also presented the youth show Switch. He'd done the Brit Awards. He'd also done some Glastonbury presenting and coverage, the Reading Festival. So he had uh, quite a lot of familiarity within young audiences who had also watched a lot of those music related shows. The Radio 1 Breakfast Show is obviously broadcast produced within the BBC studios. They have their own studios there. So that means that they are vertically uh, integrated because they can both produce and also broadcast and stream their own radio too. Um, and it means that they have the ability to have the presenters in, sitting around, chatting, lots of multiple microphones. They can bring people in for interviews and they have the technology to stream people in for interviews as well. So they don't have to have somebody in the studio to be able to talk to them. So it's quite a friendly presenter led style format of a show. In order to target those kind of young audiences who I guess they're supposed to be roughly under 30 years of age. They have a playlist of songs designed to target young people and they don't just get somebody at the BBC to choose that song. They actually have a committee um, of like young people um, and those young people choose the playlist for the Radio 1 breakfast show. Um, and so they're, they're using young people to choose the songs in order to target young people. Certain artists will have their own public relations teams who will try and sell artists and songs to the station as being appropriate for Radio 1. They also have what's called the Brit list, which means that a lot of the music they feature is British. And that is to try and target those British audiences. And that perhaps reflects the fact that the BBC does have a remit to try and showcase British talent. The BBC is what's called a public service broadcaster. That means that they have no adverts on their radio channels and they are instead funded by licence fees paid for by every household in the UK. As part of the public service broadcasting remit, the BBC say that they will always make an effort to inform, educate and entertain. Obviously, the Radio 1 Breakfast Show is very entertaining as lots of songs, lots of quizzes, competitions, phone-ins, that kind of thing but it does also offer informative and educational content as well. So for example, they do have regular news slots on Radio 1 uh, to offer informative factual information to listeners. You can obviously access BBC Radio 1 on the traditional FM format. You can also get it on digital radio, DAB, Freeview, uh, Freesat, Virgin Sky. Um, they also have BBC Radio Player as well as BBC website, their BBC Sounds app and BBC Radio 1 has its own app as well. 
So there's a huge number of different ways in which you can access this breakfast show on a huge range of platforms, whether it is through a traditional radio, a digital radio, your TV, your phone or your tablet. And that's very reflective of the fact that as a modern world, we are evolving to be using more online technology than ever before. And we do like a lot of flexibility in the way that we listen. As I've said previously, they do offer audiences quite a range of interactive content. And that's because audiences do like to be active now, making their own choices and decisions. So, for example, they do post a lot on social media. They use a lot of hashtags. Uh, they use lots of online forums and chat to encourage audience interaction as well. They ask listeners to listen, to phone in, to text in. Um, they can email in as well. So there's lots of ways for audiences to get involved. And that's probably reflective of the fact that their audience is supposed to be under 30 and under 30 year olds do quite like to be able to get involved. On YouTube, BBC Radio 1 has its own channel and on there The Breakfast Show does stream quite a lot of stuff. So, for example, behind the scenes interviews, um, it goes uh, like they, they show the making of certain segments of the show, how it's recorded. Um, and that's a great way of targeting young people and also global audiences as well. You know, they have 1.4 billion views. So um, YouTube is, and social media in general are just great ways of targeting quite a broad UK and global audience. Radio One do also offer outreach educational programmes to young people, particularly in Liverpool, where the BBC studios are now based. And that is to help young people learn about how to get into the music industry. Radio in the UK is uh, regulated by Ofcom and Ofcom are responsible for making sure that radio stations don't breach their guidelines. So, for example, um, you know, no talking uh, about particular swear words, no including anything particularly graphic, you know, on a radio show. And as a breakfast show where their main slot is in the morning, where a lot of young people could be listening and because they're, most of their listenership is supposed to be under 30, Obviously, Radio 1 are keen to stick to those guidelines and not break them because they don't want to get into trouble. They don't want to offend anybody and they don't want to end up getting sanctions. And that means that Radio 1 will often play the censored or the radio edit version of a song if the song normally contains, for example, graphic language. And that means that playing the censored version is going to avoid those Ofcom guidelines being breached. When Nick Grimshaw was the presenter, he uh, posted a tweet asking quite a sexist question about the female singer of a band and was quite quickly attacked by a lot of fans online, uh, calling him out for his misogyny. The BBC was quite quick to deal with this by issuing an apology in public. Ofcom didn't have to get involved in that situation, but they have been involved with Radio 1 Breakfast Show in the past. For example, Chris Moore's making offensive remarks and also uh, swearing live on air. It's important to understand that radio audiences are declining overall, and in particular young radio audiences. Most of you guys know that a lot of you are spending more and more time on your phones or your tablets and more time engaging with things like social media and less time engaging with more traditional media like TV and radio. Certainly less and less people are consuming live radio. Um, people just don't have the time or the patience to stick to schedules. We're used to content being on demand. And so whilst overall audiences are declining, the streaming of radio is increasing in comparison to the live broadcasts. So it's really hard to judge whether Radio 1 Breakfast Show is successful or not. Overall, radio has declining numbers, but Radio 1's Breakfast Show, like I said, has 1.4 billion people on, on YouTube and 80 million views a month on Facebook, which are record numbers for Radio 1. Um, so Radio 1 still seems to be doing reasonably well in comparison to a lot of other radio stations. So in order to try and engage more listeners or keep their regular listeners um, and stop them from deciding to go to more like online only content, um, they have to kind of use very short, uh, edgy, interesting ways of presenting stuff because young people often have quite short attention spans. They also have to be quite quick at responding to current affairs and events. So if something happens with a celebrity or in the news, they have to be reporting on it straight away on The Breakfast Show. They have to be mentioning it in the chat. If they don't talk about it, listeners will start to feel as though that radio station is uh, too out of date, too old and not providing them with up to date content. 
So that was my easy to understand guide to the Radio 1 breakfast show. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more information that's going to be relevant for you. And if you would like a video that I don't already have, leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.